All right, our next uh, type of problem is the logic problem. So there's all kinds of different types of logic problems on the test, but the basic idea is that you want to sketch things out so that you can see them for yourself. And also, don't get mixed up between 2D and 3D logic problems, um, because a lot of times they'll ask you one thing, and if you kind of visualize it the wrong way, it gets much more confusing. So, for instance, a pretty classic logic problem would be counting the diagonals in a shape. So, let's say that it gives you, it says, okay, here is a square, and it gives you, in the problem, I should keep this blue, actually, it'll give you the diagonal. So, it'll say, okay, that's a diagonal, and that's a diagonal. So, two diagonals here. Okay. So, then it'll say, given that there are two diagonals in a square, how many diagonals are in a pentagon? Okay, great. So, first things first. Um, okay, how many diagonals in a pentagon? So, first things first, you would want to go ahead and draw out a pentagon. So, all right, so here is my pentagon. So obviously you're only going to be using a pencil in the test, but I'm going to use a different color so that it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing. So we would start at, let's say, I'm going to label these points so that we can talk about them a little bit better. So we're going to start at point one. And basically it shows us that a diagonal is just going to go across to any point it can without lying, you know, across the the line that's part of the outside. So one can go to four and one can also go to three. So, so far we have two diagonals and then uh, we can look at two. So two can go over to five and two can also go to four. So now we've got two additional diagonals and then this is why I've been drawing these in different colors. Three has already gone to one, so we can't recount that diagonal. So we're just going to take three over to, ooh, to five. And then uh, notice four has already been to two and one, and five has already been to three and two. So we just get to add these three up, and we've got five. So five total diagonals. If they had asked, um, they ask the same thing, but they use a cube instead of a square, then that changes everything up because now you're dealing with a separate dimension. Okay, let's look at a problem like this. A perfect square between 1,000 and 9,999 has a positive square root with how many digits? Okay, on the surface, this might look like a really difficult problem, but actually, it's not. So there's lots of different ways that you could deal with this. You could use your calculator or you could not use your calculator. Um, but either way, no matter what numbers you're kind of plugging in to try to figure this out, you're going to get the same answer, which is pretty cool. So when uh, I saw this problem, what I did was I said, all right, I know that 10,000 is a perfect square. So I'm going to say, all right, if I square 10,000, what do I get? And uh, if you square 10,000, you're just going to get 100 out. So you know that the square root has to be less than 100. And then uh, the next thing you could do is you could say, OK, uh, 1,000, not a perfect square. So you either try to figure out a perfect square that's near it, or you could use your calculator and say, all right, fine. I'll just square 1,000 and see what I get. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and use a calculator. Um, ah, so we get 31.6227766, so uh, 6228, let's say. So you now know that your square root of whatever x is, let's say, um, has to be less than 100, and also has to be greater than 31.6, etc. So you know that your number is between, let's say, 32 and 99. So you know that your number has to have two digits. Okay, so two digits would be helpful if I didn't randomly put that extra D in there. Um, 
but it has to be 2 because you know it's less than 100 and it's more than 32, which is a two-digit number. Okay, awesome.